welcome wonderful friends thank you so so much for joining me today for the Sunday rune and card readings now today um, let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to do and what the readings will involve first of all I'm just going to talk a little tiny bit about the astrology today I've got um, the art of manifestation astro moon diary um, today is the first quarter moon so I'll just speak a tiny bit about that lunar phase and how we use that in our manifestations and a quick sort of touching base with the astrology of the day um, we're then going to talk about some additional guidance that's coming into our three readings today we're going to be drawing on the wisdom and yeah the insight and the wisdom of three different Native American herbs now this is juniper uh, sweetgrass and yerba santa so if you already know which of the readings you want to tune into if you've looked at the thumbnail at the beginning on youtube and you don't want to listen to the additional guidance or the astrology do please just forward yourself to whichever reading you want to do what i will do in in the um, information box I'll put the timestamps for the readings. I will also put a link. Um, I give away a free private reading and um, and a pack, a first signed limited edition pack of the Art of Manifestation Oracle cards every month. I've literally just uploaded, I think it was on Friday, up, I uploaded the winners from last month. So guys, do if you're on my email list, do check those out to see if you've won either the, pre, the free private reading or indeed the cards. Um, soon, as we are going to be launching um, the, the 2022 Astro Moon Diary and Journal, I will be giving away copies of these every month as well so what I'll do in the comments for phone users and in the information box I will put the subscriber email list that you need to join if you want to be in that monthly draw you, you literally only need to join it once once you're on it you're on it that's all we use it for is literally just to draw a name out of the hat or draw obviously several names out of the hat every month um, and of course if you are on that list as and when the diary and the journal are available um, we will email out and let you know as well um, you can get them on Amazon usually and or also if you buy them direct from us I'm going to be signing them the ones that come from from us direct from our little store so um, do if you want to be notified of any of that just get yourself on that email list it is a subscriber offer so you do need to be a subscriber here to this amazing YouTube channel that we have here the AZ of emotional health so let's let's move forwards now let's first of all look at the astrology of the day so we are in the first quarter moon I will read to you here the first quarter moon is sometimes thought of as a time when hurdles and obstacles that need to be overcome will push forwards and enter into our awareness now this always reminds me I think the first quarter moon of you know if you're working with the tarot and you do something like a Celtic cross the big Celtic cross layout of the reading we have the crossing card I always see the first quarter moon energy is rather like that card sometimes people see it as an obstacle for me it's usually something I need to step into or I need to step over and it may even be about revealing information to me so very powerful time to be checking in with readings today so I have written here I have found that the energy of the first quarter moon affects me in a far more vibrant and positive way during this phase of the moon having identified any inner blocks to progress during the crescent moon the seeds of the ideas that were planted at the new moon will push themselves forwards in abundance and I find myself flooded with thoughts of what I will need to do to nurture the possibilities of the new moon and enable them to take shape and manifest into real form I look carefully at the scope of my ideas and I begin to focus on those which are most important for me to initiate at this moment in time. The combination of the seeds of the new moon and the learning discovered at the crescent moon enable me to prioritize and formulate my actions for the coming month. So it's quite a pivotal time in manifestation and our readings may well assist us with this. Now, the astrology of today our beautiful moon is in Scorpio so very deep very emotional lots of um, journeying within for discovery lots of things can be revealed and almost um, shown to us in terms of the way forwards when the moon is in her first quarter peak she's always in a square with the Sun today she also squares with Jupiter expansive Jupiter who's also in retrograde so there's actually quite a lot of energy it may sometimes come with some tension but there's a lot of energy around today to 
for me, it's almost to, if you think that tension can give us traction, it, it's really the energy around for us is to see um, what we need to do in order to move ourselves forwards. Some of the things we're shown, you know, could be quite sort of, it could be a bit of a deep dive. But the moon is also flowing beautifully with Pluto, who's all about transformation, and also with Neptune, who brings us illumination and spiritual insights and awareness. So the energy today is really, really primed to give us clear indications of what we need to do to move forwards on our own pathway of manifestation. So we're going to be using these Native American herbs. So juniper is for reading number one. I have a beautiful juniper smudge stick. Now juniper is a really interesting energy because it is incredibly good if we if we're needing to cut cords, if we're needing to put something down or get clear and leave something behind or let go of something that is lingering or getting in our way. Um, it really, really does help us to sever any unhealthy connections with the past. So very powerful energy in reading number one in terms of manifestation, because very often in our process of manifestation, we have to see what we need to let go of in order to um, find our new pathway forwards. Reading number two, we're going to be tuning in with sweet grass. I love sweet grass. The, the smell of sweet grass is like vanilla. This is also known as grandmother's hair, um, a beautiful energy, very gentle. And in the same way that when we burn sage to dispel negativity, sweet grass literally attracts positivity. So it really does, in terms of manifestation and abundance, it really draws in um, what we need in order to fulfill that pathway to abundance. So very relevant to readings that are about manifestation. Lastly, we have this beautiful little smudge stick. Now this is Yerba Santa. Yerba Santa is, it, it grows at very, very high altitudes. And so in, in its very essence, it's very, very resilient and very durable. And those are the qualities it brings to us. It's also said to be particularly good at healing the lungs and very good for the respiratory system. I mean, again, I think that's quite interesting because we often carry, if we're struggling with any form of grief or resolution of things, we tend to sort of lock that the mourning process gets locked in our lungs sometimes. It's quite a, a, a sort of a, an area of symbiosis. So Yerba Santa, it, it brings resilience, it brings um, durability, it helps us to process where we are in order to continue to keep going and to move on and move through and beyond something again in terms of our process of manifestation um, this is really about giving us the staying power we need to see something through to the end and to emerge afresh and renewed so that is the energy that's coming through for reading number three and just as we did last week last week we actually used i used three different tarot packs one for reading number one one for reading two and one for reading number three plus then oracle cards and i'm going to do the same again so reading number one i'm going to draw from let me put our herbs up here out of the way a little bit so reading number one i'm going to draw from the light seers tarot We're going to draw five cards. Okay. Reading number two, we're going to draw from the Tarot of the Light. Again, five cards. Then reading number three, we're going to draw on that the, these are the Alistair Crowley Mirror of the Soul, sometimes known as the Thoth Tarot. Oops, well, flying open. And we can't use cards that we see in a pick a card reading. It's If this was a, a generic reading for any, well, or even an individual private reading, of course, any cards that fly out, we are absolutely going to respond and use them. But these are a pick a card reading so it's really important we don't see the cards before before we actually start to choose which direction which reading or indeed readings sometimes for people that they're going to tune into now in alignment 
with our Native American uh, herbs here. We're going to use some Native American oracle cards as well. Just one from each of these. I love these cards. They sometimes it's quite interesting. They give sometimes, not always, but sometimes they give some sort of indication of timing as well, which a lot of readings, you know, it's very difficult when we're seeking guidance because you know our time zones are really sort of almost irrelevant when you step into the ethers and you're you're moving into time zones which are really infinite for those who love and guide us so timings are sometimes not always as easy to sort of pinpoint it's quite funny actually about five or six years ago I had a very very significant life-changing sitting with somebody and the things that she said I honestly just thought not in a million years um, but actually I'm doing them now um, and you know she saw them very very clearly and, and I just thought well no that's definitely not me um, and it's fascinating because here I am and yeah, she was absolutely right but of course the time frame has actually taken a significant number of years we're going to use astrology cards as well just one from each pack. Moonology cards. Again, just one for each of the readings. And lastly, uh, our very, very lovely Art of Manifestation Oracle cards. So wonderful friends, this is the time when we um, really ideally just sit with our intuition. Now, I will personally pause the video and arrange the cards for a, for a photograph for the timestamps, but you might want to just pause the video for a short while, sit with the readings, sit with the energy and the messages from the herbs, see which reading or readings is speaking to you. Um, sometimes people tune in with more than one and sometimes of course people come back to them so you know bookmark the page if you feel you want to come back to them there's so much stuff um, on YouTube I find that I, I struggle to find things if I want to go back to them because the the whole algorithm thing moves everything on very very quickly and of course if you are subscribed make sure you press the little bell icon as well because that way as soon as I upload anything um, you should then get notification so wonderful friends thank you so so much for joining me so so much love to you all and I will see you in the readings namaste wonderful friends I've actually this is a quick add-on I've actually laid out the cards so that I could photograph them if you are wondering where the runes are every now and then I am drawn to literally use the whole bag of runes for every single reading if we draw runes for each out of the whole bag there is no possibility of the same rune showing up obviously in the same reading unless I've got three bags of runes so what I'm going to do when we get to each individual reading is I will then draw the runes individually which generally tends to suggest we're going to get the same rune coming out for more than one of these readings so um, I will see you in the readings wonderful friends do pause the video now you can see um, the cards laid out and um, yeah I will see you in the readings tons of love to you namaste <laughs>
you are able to overcome internal blocks or difficulties that have previously held you back. The rune of joy is a fruit bearing rune. It says that a time of travail has come to an end and it's, it's like a new dawn carried across the gap by the wings of heaven. So something is being processed and you are absolutely primed and ready to let go of whatever is or has been previously holding you back in some way. You are now ready to move forwards. The Rune of Harvest is also um, a fruit bearing rune. It, it tends to speak of a period of about a year sometimes, or at least of a natural cycle. So it may be that you're needing to peel back the layers and just systematically, I'm sort of hearing perseverance here, just consistently work at this. You know, old habits die hard and sometimes stuff comes along and presses our buttons. We have to really learn, I, I guess, um, you know, in a way, if something presses our buttons, we have to remember there are buttons. We can choose what we do. If, if buttons are pressed, we can decide to press the pause button and think about how we're going to respond. So let's look at our cards. So we've got the astrology card, Mercury Mind. Let's move our move that up here a little bit so that we've got a bit of space. In fact, I'll move our juniper stick down here and see where we go with that. And I'm going to put the runes over here for a moment. So we have Mercury Mind. You're needing to really overcome something here. It's time to take action. New Moon in Aries. Um, so also we have the card, it's okay not to be okay. What I'm seeing here is it's almost as though you literally are having to let go of some kind of a thinking pattern. It's something that has been I don't know, lodged in your mind, something that's triggered easily. And it really is time to put that to one side. You're also being asked, so, so action needs to be taken. This is the prime time to be doing this. You're also being asked to recognize your emotions. So this card says it's okay not to be okay. When we feel low or have challenging emotions, we often then feel bad about feeling bad. You know, I, I think it's almost as if if a button is pressed, we can move so quickly into self-doubt or self-criticism. And when we do that, we we're actually adding to our emotional load. This card says this effectively doubles the emotional load. This card asks you to understand your difficult feelings as guidance, highlighting that something needs to change and that you are entitled to seek support in this. It's interesting, we have the card, we have the card of smoke from the Native American um, pack. This is really interesting because this is about purification. Um, it's about releasing, you know, when we smoke is a way of, of sending prayers into the universe. I mean, very often it's also a way of letting go of things. We can burn things, we can purify. This is about transformation, purification, overcoming negativity. Quite interesting because it speaks of... Um, a period of six months to a year. So again, with the rune of harvest, you, you need to persevere with this. And remember, it's okay not to be okay if emotions surface. You know, there's a reason for it. If someone presses your buttons, and here we have the page of swords, that's interesting. If someone presses your buttons, then it, it doesn't mean the same is going to happen again. We sort of learn through experience. I think that's what this reading is also voicing and asking you to do. Yeah, to learn through experience, to refind, yeah, to refind your balance. Okay, this is really, really interesting. So our tarot cards here, we have Page of Swords, Seven of Wands, Five of Cups, the Star and the Chariot. Now there's a really clear message coming through here for you guys. The Page of Swords is, is interesting. There's a duality of message here. Sometimes the Page of Swords does indicate that you've been, I won't say targeted, but there's been gossip, rumor, bullying, just stuff that's a bit, you know, school playgroundy, not very nice stuff below the belt around you. 
It also encourages you to learn different ways of handling this. You need to step into a space where you're going to develop a new skill set, Mercury mind, literally developing new thinking patterns, not just doing battle with the old thinking patterns, but replacing them with new. The seven of wands suggests that the root of this has been envy that there have been people who have actually been envious or jealous of your success, of your capability, of your, cap of, of your manifestation skills, just envious of you. I think they connected to you or you connected to them. There were some quite strong chords. I'm seeing that with the juniper here, really quite strong chords. Um, and I think you grew out of the situation you moved beyond and away, but it's it's like it's left a residue. It's left a little bit of rawness with you. And it may even be that some of those people from time to time try to reconnect. You know, sometimes people don't want to let go of the stuff that you brought into their world, but you may actually wish to let go of them. There's something about this that's really quite strong here. And there is a bit of melancholy around it, sort of sadness that it didn't work out. But, you know, sometimes things don't, you know, sometimes we outgrow things. Sometimes you might have grown more quickly than somebody else in your circles. It doesn't mean that you should hold yourself back. There is a real need to purify, cleanse, release here. And if someone comes into your world who presses those buttons again, it's okay not to be okay. If someone new comes into your world and you feel those buttons pressed or, you know, that, you know, you can just feel that resonance, it's really good information because whoever it is, is going to be of the same ilk as the people you met before, in which case, you know, say hi, say goodbye, you know, send them love and walk away or keep your, your connection to them at a minimum. You know, you we learn from our experiences. If we've cut cords from a, a certain way of being with people, you know, if, if we grew up and left the school playground and we find ourselves in that kind of environment again, it might bring a lot of memories back to you. But it doesn't mean you have to buy into that. The reason those memories come back aren't to haunt you. Those memories have come back to inform you. Those feelings have come back to remind you and actually to kind of like raise your alert to the fact that you're in an environment where you, ne you now need to navigate this carefully. You don't want to be welcoming these people in in the way that previously you may have welcomed people in or just been in an environment where it's just the way it was and you didn't have much choice. So this is really about you utilizing your experiences. And it, it's kind of, it's like when we integrate our past experiences, when we process those experiences, again, journey within, when we process those experiences so that um, our experiences become um, they, they become integrated with knowledge, that that becomes wisdom. And from that position of wisdom, we can then make very informed choices. We're not going to make the same mistakes again because we've learned from those experiences. And so, yeah, if something or someone niggles you, pokes you, presses a, a button, just, yeah, I mean, literally pokes you. This is what I see here, this seven of wands. It's like you get, something's prodded you. Something has come into your world and it's, I won't say it's burst your bubble because I don't think it has as such, but it's reminded you of a flavour of something of the past that either did once burst your bubble or there's a sense of, yeah, maybe somebody coming back into your world who would like to burst your bubble. You've worked really hard to move on. You've learned new skills, different ways of doing things, but it's definitely time to take action. This is about severing cords. I'm going to do a bit of energy shifting here in a moment. There's melancholy, there's sadness. This is appropriate. It's sad when things don't work out, but don't again let that melancholy bring you down. Again, those feelings are appropriate. It is sad if you have had to move on from circumstances, if a friendship group has passed away or you've, it, 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 it's sad. It, there's a sadness. It's a really healthy thing. I, I have a, for those of you that are new to me and my readings, I have a, a whole online library. It's called the A to Z of Emotional Health. I'll just see if I can actually find that. There we go. Yes, A Z of Emotional Health. 
um, it's www.azemotionalhealth.com in the library if it's a membership site um, but it's full of it's totally free it will always be free it's a free resource and it's it's really there to support emotional awareness and there's a, a section in the library called the psychology of emotion and there are two um, audios in there and um, one is called the wobble of change and the other which I think is relevant to this reading is the sadness of moving forwards sometimes when we move forwards and we make real changes and their life changes and they're amazing and we're building a world that is quite something we wonder why we feel sad because it's like we've stepped forwards we've left something behind the sadness is appropriate it's part of the transitionary feelings going back to that energy of the first quarter moon today where there are connections with um, with Pluto with transformation with rebirth um, when we leave a chapter of life behind there is inevitably sadness but it creates a, a reconnection to hope to a pathway forwards to a spiritual pathway forwards this is renewed optimism renewed hope there's a, a connection with jupiter of course as well as pluto today so what i'm seeing is you do need to leave something behind in some way whether that is an actual severing of a tie or a, a, a drawing the line and closing the door and saying no to somebody or something who's trying to come back in whether it's simply saying no to a thinking pattern that's been triggered everything is about drawing that line as you draw that line and you acknowledge and validate your very real feelings then your emotions start to shift and move if we don't validate our feelings they create like an internal almost like an energetic roadblock inside us when we do we move out of darkness into light we are carried across the gap by the wings of heaven we enter a new dawn renewed faith renewed optimism and everything moves forwards again our manifestations are back in flow and we can start to nurture um, our dreams our manifestations and foster the way forwards in preparation for a harvest yet to come so there's something very powerful here now I said I'd do some energy shifting what I'm actually going to do is yeah I'm going to bring this these cards up a little bit I'm literally going to light the juniper okay it's very um, very powerful herb um, I'm going to light the juniper very lovely energy this Just going to smudge the reading with the juniper. Oh, that's really, it's really interesting because like smoke, I can literally feel the energy lifting. Now, whatever took place, it is absolutely right and appropriate for you to listen to your feelings and then release them. Now, if you don't have juniper, it's not to smudge with, it, that's absolutely fine. Um, but keep your own energy clear validate your feelings whilst acknowledging the sadness that a phase of your life has passed journey within and remove any residue of self-doubt that's what I'm being shown here it's like there's self-doubt here you were left going I think going over and over wondering what it was you did wrong to cause the kind of the I want to say the bullying or the you know this but it, it wasn't yours you know if you're in the school playground sometimes children behave rather, rather badly in an adult environment you can still find yourself in the school playground there's something really powerful about letting go of this once and for all and allowing yourself to move on you're needing to give yourself permission and literally systematically every time a little bit of scar tissue is niggled or someone comes back into your world you just close the door you say no going to give that wonderful symbol of the silver cross and the circle of light which cuts those cords what I'm also going to um, bring in here I think is some amethyst as well I need to bring my shell down we've got sage here already which I use to always smudge and prepare for the readings I'm just going to um, and forgive me as I lean across I'm just going to bring in actually some some amethyst points and I'm going to position these between these cards. Amethyst is a great healer. 
it's known as a very, very um, empowering. Um, yeah, it's literally a crystal of amazing power. I'm going to place them in between each of these cards. It's like severing these things. It's like stages that you're going to need to go through. These two need to stay together though, because once you are in that zone of renewed energy, once everything is smoking, if you need to write a letter, you know the letter never to send, those letters that are so therapeutic, write yourself a letter. You don't have to send it to anybody. In fact, I would recommend writing it and burning it. And if you have Jupiter, Jupiter, Juniper, um, burn it with Juniper as well. Or Juniper oil, of course, is also fantastic for cutting cords. But yeah, use a crystal if you have a quartz crystal or if you have amethyst. Um, it's in the past, okay? We are empowering you to know that you have the right to build your future. And this is rooted in envy. Yes, there's sadness, but don't go over this or allow this to take, take you down the road of self-doubt. Journey within and remove any aspect of that. It is time to embrace the move forwards. Use your emotions to good effect. Take action, shift those thinking patterns. Um, you didn't do anything wrong. That's what I really hear. You didn't, you did the best you could under the circumstances just by being you and stepping into the best version of you. It created an, an envy, envious reaction from people, from either a group of people or an individual. It's time to leave that behind. Wonderful friends. Um, so, so much love to you. Namaste. <laughs> Welcome to reading number two. Let's draw our runes. Beautiful energy of sweetgrass. Really does draw in and attract positivity. Quite fascinating. I can literally feel the energy here lifting. Okay, so our first rune is the rune. This is the rune of wholeness. This is the pathway you must follow. It tends to suggest there's only one way to go. It is your pathway to wholeness. It's, it's yeah, it's where you need to go. You have the rune of journey and the rune of harvest. Okay, both of these came out in reading number one. I can see now why we were drawn to use the runes for each reading. Okay, so this is the pathway you must follow. Um, it's really, really clear. There is a particular direction you need to go in. The rune of journey can sometimes indicate, literally you're going on a journey. It can indicate a new beginning. But it can also mean journeying within in order to remove any obstacles that are in your way. The rune of harvest is, is a rune of fulfillment. It is a rune of harvest. It tends to suggest there's some kind of a cycle, a process to go through to get to the harvest. But it's, it's calling you to nurture something into being. So in terms of attracting positivity and manifestation, um, very interesting connection. I'm going to move those over here. Let's have a look and see um, where we are. Okay, so we have the card of Aquarius. I know. Balsamic moon, a time for healing. We have the card of difficult emotions. This is interesting. This card asks you to listen to your emotions. Every emotion we have is necessary and important to us, even the challenging ones. Difficult feelings are letting you know that something is not okay. Learn to understand and love your emotions and discover how they serve you. This is interesting. Perseverance, nine of stars. Yeah, this, this is not entirely, it's really fascinating. It's not entirely different to reading number, it's got slight, slightly slimmer, similar flavor to number one, the reading number one. And yet it is different. It's not about, yeah, it's different because it's almost as if you're, it's like you've done reading number one. I won't say any more unless it's relevant to you and you've already watched it. But it's like you've done number one or you are reading number one and the information there and you or either that or you're still in. It, it's like encouraging your progress. Perseverance. Three of stars. Vision. Ace of stars. I can see why this has got that uplift about it. There is a powerful uplift of energy here. Ten of Hearts, culmination, Page of Hearts. Wow, you're moving forwards with something here. 
Wow, and we have card number one as well. This is like a card of destiny, of rebirth. Mm. Wow. This literally is, it's like a healing. This is a mammoth healing. It's like you've come through something. You've. That's the resonance with reading number one. Reading number one, cutting cords. Um, you will have known that if you've listened to the part of it about, you know, with the juniper. But this is, is more than that. This is like the healing. This is the moving beyond something, the healing, the emerging. It's the culmination of that. It's coming into your own again, knowing the truth, standing in your own truth. Yeah, really interesting energy. The difficult emotions is the card I'm curious about here. It is almost as though there's still some aspect of emotion that is with you. I don't know if that is just a sadness around this or there's still that sense of grieving, but this is genuinely, this feels like a healing. It's almost, it's like that, the, the, that moment where you've, I don't know if you've been in, let's say you've had to go into hospital for an operation, you know, the, the, the crisis is over, the operation has been take, has taken place, it's been successful, now you're in recovery. And you're literally going from um, strength to strength, but you're still experiencing emotionally something of the impact of, of that operation, of the process that you needed to go through in order to move through. It's very interesting because this card, this, this number one card, this destiny card in the Native American pack, the timings around it speak of a day, a month, a year. It's kind of a day, a week, a month, a year. It's like one something. So I, I feel for some of you, literally the emergence of the new is really, really imminent. It's on your doorstep. So the culmination of something, the completion and the moving forwards, the having something. Particularly in relationship, actually, if you've come through a really difficult, some kind of a difficult breakup and you're, you're needing to heal, you're coming through and out of that. If, if, if the operation in hand was not a physical operation or a healing, but an emotional healing, you've come through it and out the other side and you are absolutely primed and ready for the new beginning. Actually, all of, for all of you, there is a new beginning arriving. It's really interesting that this, the nine of stars in this pack, um, this is the equivalent of the nine of wands. So it's kind of can feel like a bit of a, a final testing. We, we've had to come through something. We're having to just, it's the last, it's the process of something. Three of stars vision. This is like three of wands. It's um, it's it's a cre it's, it's a creative surge of energy. Something is beginning to actually something is beginning to manifest here. You've done the work. You've been through the process. Um, now the time of healing is really coming to its completion. This is a new beginning. For some of you, there may be a little bit of a wobble, but I, I want to say don't wobble. There's a real new beginning. For some of you, it literally is. It's, it's like it, it's there. It's about to happen. It's tomorrow. For others, it's a week. It's still very, very imminent. For others, it's a month. And maybe for some, it's a year. But there's something about a natural cycle that you are involved in. You, you know what you're doing here. You know the truth. This is about you standing in your truth and refinding I want to say your innocence, but it's really interesting. I would also venture to say, I, I'm kind of seeing someone coming into your life. If you had a really difficult relational challenge of some sort, and you've been working around manifesting your own healing and moving forwards and welcoming a new relationship in, for example, a new chapter in, whatever that is, it's, I think, I think this is about to manifest. That's what's happening. It really is about to manifest. It's like the healing is really, really becoming integrated and consolidated within you. I, I don't know what else to say. I think you're attracting in, you're manifesting and attracting in what it is that you have wanted. Even though something previously didn't work and you've had to work through something and you've had to heal. 
Again, it's like if you, using that analogy, if you, if you were poorly and went into hospital, had an operation, you're now going to start to recover. And your recovery is literally happening now. You go from strength to strength, literally leaps and bounds. Yeah, if it was a relationship challenge, a difficult ending in some way, you come through this. I think someone comes into your world or you meet someone, something emerges or maybe even a reconciliation. But if it is, it's one that heals. It's where that gap is bridged. You come back together. The, the healing really has come from the inside out. That's what this rune of journey is really telling me here. And it's interesting because the rune of wholeness is the path that you must follow. It indicates that you are becoming that whole, integrated, flourishing human being. And once we reach that space of true knowing, we're not knocked about or um, we're not knocked off our perch by the views and perspectives of others. We know the deal, we know where we are. We're solid in our own pathway. Big respect to you guys, because I'm being shown that you've come through. I'm, almost, I'm being shown a really stormy sea. You've come through some really big storms and you've had to work very, very hard to reach this space of emotional healing. But actually, the new is unfolding for you. Do not lose sight of your vision. Do not lose sight of your vision. You know the deal and you are in a space where literally your manifestations are on the verge of birthing. It's very, very powerful in terms of the sweet grass bringing in the positivity. Um, I would venture to say if any of you are worried about keeping your energy really clean and, you know, in good alignment, sweetgrass is an amazing herb to burn around you because it literally draws in positivity. You might also want to carry um, white quartz. Excuse me while I lean across, but I have a little white quartz angel here. Um, I, I actually have a smaller version of this. It's like a little talisman angel that is so tiny I can just pop it in my pocket or, or for me as a woman in my bra and carry it with me. White course literally, um, it repels negativity. It literally bounces it off. So if in any way you find yourself having a wobble or doubting yourself or doubting your ability to manifest, um, align with the energy of sweet grass or white quartz. Really, really fabulous kind of energy flow there to help you remain on course. I feel like you don't really need it. I feel like you're really learning to understand your emotions and discover how they serve you. I feel that this is this is the source of your empowerment. You know, you're understanding how to use emotions. In reading number one, I, I drew attention to, um, I have a library of the A to Z of emotional health. Now this library is a completely free resource. I pulled this up on reading number one as well and I'm going to do it again now. Um, it's a completely free resource. It always will be. It is full of stuff that teaches you audios, videos, conversations, articles, blogs that teach you how to understand your emotions as a source of empowerment. You know, if we feel something challenging, we need to validate those emotions because, you know, sometimes, for example, if we feel angry about the way someone behaved, interestingly enough, if we suppress the anger, Obviously, we don't want to react to it and act in an aggressive manner. But if we suppress the anger, it will create a kind of internal energetic roadblock. If we validate the anger, it can become a source of assertiveness. It's like, do you know what? I am moving forwards regardless. I am worth more than that. I see this clearly. You know, so there's something about understanding emotions. So do use the library if that is of any help to you. In the meantime, wonderful friends, I just need to say the energy for you guys is at a pivotal turning point. I really feel like the shift is happening. You've done the work. You know the deal. The healing is coming to a space of completion. Whatever's going on around you, nine of stars, perseverance. Whatever's going on around you, persevere. You are literally in a final stage of healing where you are stepping forward, stepping over, stepping beyond. And the energy is absolutely with you for a new beginning. Hold your vision. You're going to get a massive burst of incoming energy, a day, a week, a month, a year, something about this cycle. But I, I have to say, I kind of feel it's it's actually, for most of you, I think, pretty imminent. I think we are talking a day, a week, a month. You know, these are weekly readings. They 
sometimes suggests that we need to have patience in something. But this reading isn't loaded with that message of patience. It's loaded with the message of unfolding and emergence. So I feel that there may be help coming in to support you as well. But there is a culmination and reward coming here. Ongoing happiness, contentment. Ten of Hearts is always about ongoing contentment. And really, really interesting. I, I think Page of Hearts also speaks of us as, it's got that aspect of, yeah, it's got that aspect of, of almost um, rediscovering your own personal worth, okay? So there's something very powerful about being able to have to have, to own, to move forwards, to receive. Wonderful friends, I'm going to wrap this reading up. It feels absolutely fabulous. Tons and tons of love to you. Namaste. <laughs> Welcome to reading number three with the lovely, lovely healing energy and resilience and durability of uh, Vierba Santa growing at high altitudes. It really does give us the strength to come through something to continue, particularly on our pathway of manifestation. Let's draw our runes first. We have the rune of Gateway. We have the rune of Othilla, Separation. And we have the rune of signs. This is sort of signs, signals, synchronicities. I don't know why I'm putting those up there. They're going to move down here, actually. Um, so we've got enough room for all our cards. I feel like there's a decision that you need to make here. So the rune of gateway, it, it's, it invites us to kind of almost like walk to the top of a mountain, um, pause and reflect and review, literally cast your mind back over everything that has led you to be where you are today. And then with the insight um, and the awareness and the wisdom, interesting high altitudes, looking down at something, having that overview, you're in a position to make clear choices, to walk through the gateway, to step through the gateway. It also, I think for me, always resonates with gratitude, that attitude of gratitude, where we, we know that even if we face some tough choices, um, we appreciate the learning. It's made us who we are. Resilience, durability coming through again. Othilla is the rune of separation, which suggests that you've outgrown a situation. Something that used to work for you no longer does and you need to move on. It's like a snake shedding its skin. You're being shown the way. Signs, signals, synchronicities are being offered to you. So first house, first house the body. This is our astrology card. We have... A new romantic cycle begins, um, new moon in Libra, synchronicity, signs, symbols, synchronicities. This is very powerful. This is really, really powerful. And we have the card of the dream catcher. Let's just, let's just reference these first before we look at the tarot. Okay, so this is a relationship reading as such. Whether this is an existing relationship and you're being asked to persevere and move forwards, or whether it is a brand new relationship and you are being asked to persevere and move forwards, to take a risk, to launch into the unknown, whether you are also actually having to process loss or a relationship breakdown, or even for some of you, the loss of somebody. This is often associated with grieving and moving on. So there is something about moving forwards here. This is very clear though, first house the body, new romantic cycle begins, listen here, synchronicity, are seemingly random coincidences showing up in your life. This card asks you to listen to the signs and take them seriously. You are tuning into the universal energy of a greater collective consciousness and these synchronicities are arriving in your world to guide you, listen. You really are being shown the way. We have the dream catcher. The dream catcher really, really, and I'm sure many of us know what this is. Um, 
The dream catcher is hung above, uh, often a child's bed, to catch the dreams. It stops nightmares from coming in, but it also holds those wishes, dreams and intentions. So very, very powerful um, energy to be entering at a time of transition. Let's look at our tarot cards. So our first card is the card of works. We then have the card of pleasure. This was interesting because this was actually sitting in reverse. So, I mean, as a general rule, this particular pack don't offer reverse interpretations, but I am mindful that it was in reverse. So I'm going to place it in reverse for now and we'll just think about how that is being portrayed. We have the Ace of Discs, we have the Ten of Cups and we have the Emperor. Hmm, this is really interesting. I want to say who whose energy is this? Okay, signs, signals, synchronicities. You are literally in a space of a new beginning. First house, the body. Let's just focus on this first because there's an energy of perseverance here. What I feel is that you have somewhere historically, you've either come through a difficult patch in a relationship and you're needing to reestablish it. In which case this reading is saying persevere, this is worthy of investment. Um, yes, you need to leave a chapter behind, but it's worth moving forwards. The card of works says if you are prepared to work at something, it's kind of like the outcome is guaranteed. You have to persevere and be consistent. For some of you, it, that may be the case. It may be an existing relationship, but for many of you, I think it is about a new chapter, a new relationship. A new cycle is beginning. You're being shown the way you've experienced hurt before. I feel with the body, you're being asked to, that there's self-care involved here. You're being asked to really think about your own, your own value. Listen to your body. Your body won't lie. So if you're having a wobble, because this is all about resilience and perseverance, having to let go of something. That may be a thinking pattern. It may be um, those fears that something will go wrong again. If you listen to your body, your body won't lie. You know, your body, your body carries emotions. It carries emotional responses. If you think about Think about the sayings that we have that relate to the body, like, you know, your gut feeling, for example, or, you know, I was choked up you know, when something's in your throat or you swallow, you know, I couldn't swallow that. I can't swallow that. Or, you know, put your shoulders into it or, you know, all those, there's tons of sayings that are associated with the body. But what they're actually describing is emotional states. If you listen to where an emotion sits in your body, it will give you really good information. It kind of cuts through the ego mind and the fears and the insecurities that we carry from the past. And very often it helps us to continue to persevere. It's like trust your gut feeling, listen to your heart. Uh, I feel like you are being asked here, again, pause and reflect. Don't be phased by a process of the new beginning whether it's an existing relationship or whether it's, it's completely new, um, you are leaving a chapter behind and quite rightly so because it's, it's really, really time for you to move forwards and allow yourself the possibility of the new. This is the, the reason I think the card, the Six of Cups was in reverse because there is an element of almost a little bit of a wobble. Can you trust the signs? Can you trust the synchronicities? I almost feel like the universe will pull up sign after sign after sign and you'll still be going, mm, I wonder if that's actually real. Can I really trust that? Or almost as if something from the past has caused you to have that wobble. So we're going to do a bit of energy shifting in this reading because actually everything here is saying, trust this. Trust that you are protected. The nightmares aren't going to come back or if they do it's more likely because of your fears than the actual happening around you. Everything here is suggesting that you do move forwards. Your pathway to happiness is emerging. The Ten of Cups is all about ongoing contentment, love, um, permanence in relationship, um, happiness and um, finding the right person for you. So really really lovely energy. The Emperor Look at this coming into you. Now, if we recognize that these court cards are non-gender specific, this is somebody really strong coming into your life. This is somebody who's really going to stand by you. 
This is, there's someone coming into your world who really wishes to create a new beginning with you. A new romantic cycle begins. If it's someone coming in from an existing relationship or even a past relationship returning, then they are here to make a commitment to you. They are committed to your happiness. They want a new beginning. There is this wobble going on for you. So we're going to shift a little bit of this here. What we're going to do is we are going to really recognize that our body will, our body doesn't lie. So, you know, if you're having a wobble, listen to your body. Let your body speak. If your heart is fluttering, that's not anxiety or fear. Actually, it's because this person is creating that spark for you. Listen to the synchronicities. Ask for signs. Ask for, ask for information to come through your dreams and it will be shown to you. It's really, really time to, to kind of, yeah, persevere. That's why I'm going to place the Yerba Santa here. Persevere. Being able to keep your breath at, at high altitudes. Be able to handle um, a space of the level of reflection that's needed to keep you grounded and to keep those doorways open, those gateways open. You're leaving a phase of life behind and rightly so. Persevere and keep working. Now, if you just sit with this, I'm going to shift the energy of this card. Just, in fact, actually listen to your body as I do this. Listen to where the energy is sitting right now. And as we shift this into an upright position, Mm, it's really interesting. I actually felt that in my solar plexus. I was really curious, which of course is a, a center, a chakra center of creativity, the source and spark of the new. This card is also coming with a very clear message. Don't rush to define something. Allow it to flow. Trust in the signs, the synchronicities. Allow this energy to flow. Allow this new relationship or this new phase of relationship to unfold in its own organic way. Enjoy the moment. Celebrate every second. Don't dwell in your ego or in your fears or in your head. Dwell in your dreams and dwell in the present. It's like be centered in the present, hold fast to your dreams and allow yourself to receive that wonderful energy that comes when that spark arrives in your life. The person around you is, is genuine. They are committed. They wish to support you. This is somebody of the world. This is somebody really solid. They are who they say they are. And I think you've had experiences before of someone who wasn't who they said they were. And that's hence the wobble. Everything here is you, you're going to be shown the way. Handle the high altitudes of that dizziness in, in a new beginning of love. Trust that the way will be shown. Ask for support in your dreams. Do not listen to the nightmares that your ego mind can produce when you are fearful or worried. Don't stay in a zone of security either. Sometimes we stay in a safe zone because it feels better to remain almost alone and isolated than take the risk of stepping into the new. This reading says step into the new. It really, really does. I don't think there's anything left to do or to say here. Wonderful friends, tons and tons of love to you. Um, wow, such a pivotal time this first quarter moon, opening up possibilities, showing you the way. Wonderful friends, so much love to you. Namaste.